I've been interested in bugs since I was a kid. Meet Crystal Boyd, Minnesota DNR bee researcher. She's here today at Roscoe Prairie Scientific and Natural Area in central Minnesota to collect bees. Our most recent state species list was done in 1919, so almost 100 years ago, and it, the guy who wrote it passed away before he could finish. So 100 years later, we're coming back to figure out what bee species we have in Minnesota. She methodically makes the rounds of her handmade traps. I have 24 bee traps out here, and they're elevated on stilts so bees can see them. Bees are attracted to the color. They see yellows and blues really well. So I have yellow, blue, and white pan traps. They're little cups full of water, so the bees think that it's a flower, and they fly in and they drown. I set the traps out usually before 9 a.m. on the first day, and then I come back 24 hours later to pick them up. Bees mostly fly between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. It's a little like a treasure hunt. There's usually about one to three bees in a cup. We've got nine flies and then one bee. This is an agapostamin bee, a sweat bee, a, si a shiny green bee. Boyd's work couldn't be more timely. Honeybees are facing a lot of challenges and our native bees are facing the same challenges. So pesticide use and habitat loss, those things are challenging honeybees and also challenging our native bumblebees and sweat bees. Native bees provide food for wildlife and habitat for wildlife. They pollinate all the beautiful flowers we like to look at. And they also pollinate plants that can purify water or prevent soil erosion. So bees and other pollinators are very, very important parts of our ecosystems. Let's see what the next one has. The study, paid for through the Minnesota Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund, will focus on up to 45 native prairie sites and up to 45 restored grasslands for two years. But it might take longer to really see how the bees are doing. If we can monitor for a long time, we can see what bee populations are doing. Are they increasing? Are they decreasing? So far on this day, the number of bees recovered is low. It is a little surprising um, because we have such beautiful flowers out here at Roscoe Prairie SNA that I expected a lot of bees. But maybe because they have so many flower choices, they aren't going to the cups as much. Still, each trap holds promise. Oh, here we have another bumblebee. And this one's a really small bumblebee, so I know it's a worker. I also have a honeybee, which is pretty common on scientific and natural areas, and a sweat bee. So this one has had the most diversity out of all the cups so far. Boyd will freeze the bees for the time being. Later, she'll put them on pins, label them, and enter the information in a database. Eventually, the specimens will become part of the University of Minnesota's insect collection. This database is going to be a great tool because it provides that baseline data for all the other surveys that come later. People will have something to compare their research with and to learn how things have changed. We found two honeybees, three bumblebees, and two sweat bees today. That's seven bees out of 24 traps, and everything else was a fly or a moth. I love being outside. I just love being out here, looking at the bugs. There's something new every day. A new bee, a new moth, a new flower. It's really been a lot of fun to be out here. <laughs>